show you a simple wax up technique that we use when we train all our new employees. In fact, I'll show you two different methods on one case. One, because some employees like different, use wax different ways. One, we like to soften the wax up, fold it, start around the one side, and press it up against the teeth. With this technique, I am purposely overwaxing it because it really doesn't matter. Pinch it off the, the peripheral row. And take a waxing iron. Make sure it's sealed around the teeth, especially inner proximals. Zap it, zap it, zap it. And melt it, seal it around the row. And a lot of people, and in some cases like partials anyway, you'll want to flow it on. So you'll take some preheated wax, and on this side we'll flow it on instead. One of the keys to a good wax up is basically not to let the wax form any pockets where food can get trapped. So even though you want to give the, the illusion that you've got a nice contoured gingiva, you actually want it flowing away from the tooth so that it doesn't trap, trap food. <coughs> you, um, after you get all your wax on, you submerge it in cold water and let it chill. The outside you can use in both methods, either the folded wax or the flow on, but on the inside you basically save a lot of time by just flowing it on the interior because it just takes a second. And when you go to finish the case, all this is going to come out anyway. And take a torch. Flame out the bumps. Give it a nice smooth bowl shape and let it run around the inner proximal of the teeth. Then we cool it. And generally while the upper is cooling, we, we wax up the lower and then swap out. While the lower is cooling, we'll take the upper. Notice all the, all the wax all over everything. And that's what the brush is here for. First we contour the wax toward the peripheral. And just a nice steady hold the brush down, let it do the work. This is the doctor's base plate, so uh, we haven't improved it much. All right. Then you have uh, the peripheral where you like it, or how I like it. Concentrate on the teeth. <clears throat> there again, I'm pressing the teeth at a 45 degree angle toward the center of the brush. Concentrating the brush on the teeth alone and not so much on the wax. As you'll notice, the brush kind of wraps around the teeth and forms the wax around the teeth also. Okay, on this side I'll go the other way so you can see how it looks after you come out of the teeth. And as you can see, if you concentrate on just brushing the teeth and not the wax, the brush does a lot of the carving itself, leaving just a bit of wax from where your idea gingiva, gingiva is and we're uh, cleaning off all the wax off the teeth. The brush does takes all the wax off the teeth and shakes the wax up toward the contour of the teeth. And because of the natural contour of the teeth, uh, if you just lay the brush there and let it do the work, it may take it a while, but it'll 
it won't take too much off because all you're hitting is a tooth and the tooth is making the brush wrap around it so it gets the wax just like you want it. And you want to run around the inside to clean out all that stuff. Okay. Okay, we've brushed the row down to where we want it, and we've brushed the neck of the teeth down to where we want it, so we have to get the area between the neck and the row to where we want. And the brush is good at that by just basically laying it between the two. Get it like you want. You can also use the brush and clean the brush with a knife. And it helps to wax to one side when you're doing this. And you can also do a little festooning with the corner of the brush if you're into festooning. The mouth is a smile, and the cuspids form the frame of that smile. So you want to have a fairly strong cuspid eminence in your wax up. Now I like to carve with the case on the model. So I put it back on the model with the articulator. Just gives me more balance. Run the roach carver around the necks of the teeth. It should be in one nice little continuous run. Uh, make your carve right at the neck of the teeth, sloping away from the teeth so that you don't create a food trap. And like you said, <clears throat> there's not a whole lot of wax coming off. Your brush has got your wax right to the teeth. You're just making that one fine definition between wax and, uh, wax and teeth so that it's clear, it's clean. Occasionally, you'll dig out too much out of the inner proximal, but that's what we call characterization or naturalization of the denture. And once you've made one pass all the way around, go to the inside, and it's more of a straight up and down carve because of the way denture teeth are made. And it's just a straight up and down. And at this point, there's not a whole lot of need to put a lot of carving in for a try-in because when it comes back for a finish, we'll be cutting the palette out and putting palatal patterns And as you can see, there's not a whole lot of wax coming off this way either. All right, <clears throat> after we've made our first carve, I like to go over it once more softly with the brush just to blend in any rough peaks that the carve may have given us. Okay. And then I take a piece of cotton with uh, wax solvent on it and just brush it on the teeth. Brush, 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 brush. And the wax will pick up a lot of the, the Cotton will pick up a lot of the wax. Then you take a clean paper towel and you wipe the solvent off. From lingually and otherwise, buckle labelly. And we take an alcohol torch, because the brush wheel leaves an awful lot of little bitty uh, scratches and just give it a light torching, bring the shine out, take all the scratches out, and it does help evaporate the wax solvent some. Then we chill it. Then you take a wet cotton with just clean cold water and buff it. Uh, the wax solvent is actually water soluble, so the water helps remove any any wax solvent that the flame did not fire off. 
but the buffing gives you a real nice high shine to it. Okay, and then for 99% of our cases, it goes out like that, but when you really want to wow a doctor or a patient, doctors don't get wild, but patients do. Put a piece of cellophane over the, over the wax, take your little bristle, Robinson bristle brush, and just run it up and down, run it in approximately, pull it off, run it some more, pull it off, run it some more. The plastic is merely to protect the wax, keep the bristles from gouging too deep, and it also helps the bristles form more perfect holes. And that's that.